Welcome to a live BYU devotional broadcast. Today, Andra Duke of BYU Television will address the campus community. The devotional originates from the Marriott Center on the BYU campus. Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to the devotional. My name is Julie Franklin. I'm the Student Life Vice President, and I will be conducting today. We are pleased to have Andra J. Duke, Director of Content for BYU Broadcasting, as our speaker today. We expect, extend a special welcome to her husband, Steve, as well as their family members and friends who are here. We invite you to join us next Tuesday at this same time and place when we will have the opportunity to hear from Paul V. Johnson, Elder Paul V. Johnson, a General Authority 70 of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We hope you will join us. This morning's prelude was provided by Levi Kelly, a graduate student in organ performance from Rexburg, Idaho. Stephen Dugdell, a graduate student majoring in choral conducting from Joplin, Missouri, led us in the opening hymn. The invocation will be offered by Kelly Pratt, an associate producer for BYU TV, immediately following the opening prayer. BYU Noteworthy will perform How Great Thou Art. Now the prayer by Sister Pratt. Our dearest Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the chance we have to gather here today in the Marriott Center to hear from Sister Duke and to partake of the light and knowledge that she will be sharing with us today. We are especially grateful for the staff and faculty and students of Brigham Young University that create a mission in their hearts to build the Kingdom of God and create an uplifting and inspiring community here. We are grateful for the Atonement of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, and the peace and courage and redemptive power that comes through him. We pray for the courage and strength to accomplish all that thou wilt have us do as we go throughout our week today and our studies, our jobs, and our families and communities. We pray for the continued inspiration and guidance from the Holy Spirit to testify of thy love to us. We pray for opportunities to reach out to those closest to us and to minister to them as the Savior would. And we say these things in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, my Savior, God, to Thee, my God, to 
Thank you, BYU Noteworthy, for your inspiring music, which has set the tone so beautifully this morning. Andra J. Johnson Duke is the Director of Content for BYU Broadcasting, where she heads up development and current programming. Her primary responsibilities include oversight of content strategy, program development and current production, programming and scheduling, acquisitions and production management. Andra received a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from BYU. Prior to joining BYU Broadcasting, Andra served as Vice President of Unscripted Production at BBC Worldwide Productions in Los Angeles, where she oversaw a variety of television series for multiple networks. Sister Duke enjoys traveling, trying new foods, and game nights with friends. She currently serves as a specialist in the young women 14 and 15-year-old class in her home ward. Andra and her her husband, Steve, are the parents of three children. Following Sister Duke's remarks, the benediction will be offered by Jake Peterson, a production coordinator at BYU Broadcasting. Now we'll be pleased to hear from Andra J. Duke. I'm grateful to be with you today. It's such an honor to be here. Also a bit surreal uh, to be standing here after attending these devotionals as a student so many years ago. I'm grateful for the support of my family, my friends, my colleagues, as well as some of the young women from my ward who are here today. Preparing for this talk has been a humbling journey, and I pray that the Spirit will be the better communicator during our short time together. Producing and creating content for television has been a part of my life for nearly 25 years. I've had the great privilege of working and collaborating with creative, committed, and talented individuals across the globe on thousands of hours of content for net networks both domestic and international. Well, I've had many wonderful experiences over the years the unique opportunity to create content at BYU Broadcasting that embraces and magnifies eternal truth central to the gospel of Jesus Christ has been one of the most rewarding of my career. I'd like to talk to you today about what it means to be intentional spiritual creators in our own lives. All meaningful creation begins with a spark a kernel of an idea that is filled with potential. It requires faith, imagination, and focus to grow it into existence. When God created the world, he intentionally shaped and brought order from chaotic matter to create the heavens, the earth, and everything on it. We learn from Moses chapter 3, verse 5, about a vitally important step in the creative process. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For I, the Lord God, created all things of which I have spoken spiritually before they were naturally upon the face of the earth. This ability to create spiritually, to conceptually form an idea before we bring it into existence, is a process that sets us apart from God's other creations. Isn't it interesting that out of everything he created on this earth, only we are made in his image? I believe that with this truth comes a divinely inherited ability to spiritually shape our own creations, including the experience and path we will forge here in mortality. Most often when we think of creators or creativity, the works of sculptors, artists, painters, writers, composers, dancers, or even actors come to mind. Some of you may not consider yourself to be the creative type, but I'd like to challenge that notion. Creativity and creation are an integral part of our divine DNA. Elder Uchtdorf describes our creative nature in this way. The desire to create is one of the deepest yearnings of the human soul. No matter our talents 
education, backgrounds, or abilities, we each have an inherent wish to create something that did not exist before. Remember, you are spirit children of the most creative being in the universe. Creativity then becomes a broad and beautiful palette in which we all participate. It encompasses unique expressions, both tangible and intangible, from complex equations, magnificent structures and technology, to our personal nurturing relationships and dedicated service to one another. A primary facet of spiritual creation is the ability to see potential even when others see none. My grandfather, George Barak, was a first-generation immigrant from Lebanon. As a child of the Great Depression, he and his sister often went hungry, and they would do any odd job to help make ends meet. During the potato harvest season, George would scour the railway tracks to find potatoes that had fallen from the trains so his family could use them to make soup. With only a seventh grade education, and despite numerous challenges, George imagined something more. He developed a lifelong passion for planes and motorcycles. He would gather rusty parts of old Harley-Davidson motorcycles in junkyards at swap meets or even on the side of the road. Where others saw pieces to be discarded, George saw something to be restored. He would sand and polish and paint with an artist's hand. Throughout his life, he restored dozens of beautiful bikes, each a unique work of art. George became well known to many in the Harley Davidson community. His work was covered in magazines, and he was even inducted into the Rocky Mountain Motorcycle Museum Hall of Fame, where others saw old, broken parts. George saw potential. One of my favorite scriptures speaks to the potential that our Heavenly Father sees in each of us. In Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17, it reads, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. This is a stunning inheritance. As children of God, whatever state we're in right now, whether we're rusty or just need a good polish, this inheritance means that our potential is endless. How might your desires, your focus, your choices, and your path change if you could fully see yourself as God sees you? I'd like to turn now to one of the most important spiritual creations that you will craft during this earthly existence, your story. You have a unique story that you are shaping every day through your experiences and choices. There has never been, nor will there ever be, another story like yours. Is your story an intentional spiritual creation is it a story that relies perhaps too heavily on another's influence or is happening too much by default? Is it a story that is in harmony with our master creator, our Father in heaven? President David O. McKay taught, Sculptors of life are we, with our uncarved souls before us. Every one of us is carving a soul. These careful carvings, not only of our own soul, but also of those, those carvings that we create in the lives of others, will shape our existence, not only here, but eternally. For all of us, our souls are a work in progress. My incredible parents, spouse, children, siblings, extended family, friends, teachers, and mentors have all been wonderful and loving sculptors throughout my life. We must be so careful who or what we allow to create these carvings on our souls. The most important carvings will be those that are led by the Spirit. When we listen and choose to act, these pivotal carvings transform our lives. 
Television production was not a path I had ever considered during my earlier education or even in my college years. Following graduation, my husband Steve and I moved to Los Angeles. I still remember many of the difficulties of that first year. We were newlyweds with uncertain and unstable career paths, living in a huge city far away from our families and friends. After working a year of uninspiring jobs to pay the bills, I felt stagnant. I prayed and I pondered and questioned often, not without discouragement, whether we would ever figure it out. Around this time, I had a strong prompting to quit my job. We were barely scraping by in this big, expensive city. To quit without having something else lined up was truly terrifying to me. But the spiritual nudge was unmistakable. So I quit, not knowing what was next or how we would have enough to pay our rent. In the days and weeks that followed, I prayed often and searched for direction and jobs <laughs> until one day a relative offered to introduce me to their childhood friend who was an executive at a television production company. So many beautiful blessings have come into my life from that first meeting with Debbie. She continues to be an incredible mentor and dear friend. She is a woman of faith who has blessed me and my family. Debbie and I have reminisced often about the perfect and inspired timing of that first meeting. The window in which I could have been hired was so small. She took me under her wing and taught me so much. I know that it was through the spirit that we were put in each other's lives. That leap of faith to quit my job was the catalyst for years of experiences, friendships, joys, and lifelong learnings to come. I'm so grateful that I chose to listen in that moment. One of my primary responsibilities at BYU Broadcasting, together with our incredible team, is to find those stories of faith and redemption that entertain, inspire, uplift, and improve families and communities. A great story can be a powerful motivator. It can inspire joy, empathy, connection, and understanding. Story has the potential to shape and influence us for good and bad. We can look to the Savior who utilized the power of storytelling to impress upon us important doctrines, the ten virgins, the prodigal son, or the good Samaritan, help us internalize eternal principles of preparedness, forgiveness, mercy, repentance, kindness, and the list goes on. In media creation, finding, cultivating, and creating the best stories takes time. This de development process always begins as an act of spiritual creation, of imagining what an idea could become. Brainstorming, outlines, scripts, a trailer, proof of concept, or even a fully produced pilot might be created before we ultimately decide to green light a project. This process takes months, and in some cases, years. To me, this process of content creation is a beautiful metaphor for our own intentional journey. One of the thir first things that we do with any new content idea is boil the premise down to a few sentences. We may refer to this as an elevator pitch or a log line, but beyond that, we always explore the core principles that we want to communicate. What is at the heart of it? I'd like to illustrate this principle across three very different projects that we've developed and produced at BYU TV. For the scripted drama, Ruby and the Well, a logline might read, when Ruby and her father inherit a crumbling family estate, she discovers an old wishing well. When the well chooses her as its new keeper, it's up to Ruby and her friends to solve the mystery behind each wish that has languished in the well for years. Together they find a way to grant them one by one bringing hope and healing to a broken town. 
But at the core, Ruby in the Well is about sa service, sacrifice, an awareness to the needs of others, and the willingness to act on that knowledge. Much like how the Spirit works in our own lives, when we are open to those promptings, we have a greater capacity to understand and serve each other. Or we might look at Saving Me, a half-hour animated comedy with a very different tone and approach. The logline would read, Bennett Bramble, a tech genius billionaire living in the future has everything he ever wanted, except happiness. When Bennett builds a time machine and travels back to his 11-year-old self to fix his past, chaos ensues. Together, and often badly at first, the two Bennetts must reinvent themselves and learn what it means to become a good person in this ultimate do-over. While housed in a quirky animated comedy, the core of Saving Me is rooted in eternal progression, repentance, forgiveness, family relationships, and ultimately, redemption. And finally, the documentary series Artful. Prominent painters, illustrators, sculptors, and others provide a rare, intimate glimpse into the lives of artists. They share how they are moved upon to create some of their most important works and how the process of creation connects them with the divine. While beautiful masterpieces are created, at its core, artful is about humility, listening and recognizing spiritual impressions, and the process of co-creation with the divine. I love that eternal and distinctive truths can be woven into such varying creative expressions. As you examine your own life, how would you characterize your creative expression? What does your individual logline look like? How would you define the principles that make up your core? So once we've identified this heart of an idea, the next step in the development process is to flesh out the form. In both scripted and non-scripted development, these discussions will include format, story structure, arc, theme, plot, conflict, and character. In a layered, rich story, industry sources will often refer to the varying plot lines as A, B, and C stories. The A story is what it sounds like. This will be the primary storyline for the main character or protagonist. The B story is generally a parallel storyline, but it's headed more by secondary characters. And the C story is where you might see smaller threads or runners that pay off long term. But the characters won't have any significant transformation. As we go through the scripting process, wonderful, funny, and dramatic story ideas will arise that improve and strengthen the A story. Alternatively, though, some ideas, while compelling, can weaken the main story if they aren't aligned with its core purpose. These ideas can be very difficult to let go of sometimes. Carefully, we must discern and weed out those distracting ideas if we are to stay focused on the story that really matters. In Moses chapter 1, verse 39, we read, for behold, this is my work and my glory, to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of men. All of his commandments, doctrines, and teachings are tied to the plan of salvation, our Heavenly Father's A story, and the purpose of our creation. If we are his work and glory, what are we doing to align our A story with his? Is it possible that we're spending too much time and energy as a secondary character on our own journey, focused on B or C subplots and missing his larger narrative? Another aspect of great storytelling is a strong protagonist. A compelling lead character is always a complex, flawed being with nuanced emotions, strengths, and weaknesses driven by an overarching, aspirational objective. 
If you've seen Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, or even The Lion King, then you've already been introduced to a popular archetypal story pattern called the hero's journey. I can't help but think that this structure resonates deeply because it closely mirrors our own spiritual journey. In this pattern, our hero leaves the familiar world behind to venture into the unknown. In this new and foreign world, our hero will face many trials, temptations, and adversaries. They will also find allies, mentors, to assist them in finding their higher purpose. This higher purpose will always be something greater than themselves, greater than their own happiness or livelihood. Through grueling preparation and training and a great awakening to their true potential, they overcome their greatest challenge and return triumphant to the familiar world. While you've seen examples of wonderful, complex characters, you've also likely experienced flat, one-dimensional characters that lack depth or substance and often lean on stereotypes. A one-dimensional character is the same at the beginning of a story as they are in the end. As children of God, we are built to learn, transform, and evolve. We are built for eternal progression. I see a disturbing trend, especially in our current social media-driven environment, in which our brothers and sisters are presented as stereotypes, as one-note caricatures who lack nuance or depth and are incapable of growth instead of the children of God that we all are. In her 2021 TED Talk entitled, The Danger of a Single Story, Nigerian author Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie states, the single story creates stereotypes. And the problem with stereotypes is not that they are untrue, but that they are incomplete. They make one story become the only story. The consequence of the single story is this. It robs people of dignity. It makes our recognition of our equal humanity difficult. It emphasizes how we are different rather than how we are similar. Let us be so careful that we don't reduce ourselves or others to a single story. We must see each other as a collection of our stories, both shared and unique. If our primary story is that of a child of God, then we are bound in that, regardless of any individual beliefs or perspectives that we might have. So now that we've moved through the development process and conceptually formed an idea, it's time to bring this abstract creation into physical existence through production. Film and television production is a grueling experience made up of long days and weeks, often in a hotel, away from family and friends. It requires constant collaboration, sometimes with hundreds of people at a time, and immense flexibility to adapt the daily problems that inevitably arise. Many challenges will cause you to creatively stretch in ways you can never prepare for. In this industry, truth is often stranger than fiction. For example, I was asked at one point, how many, paras how many parachuting Elvis impersonators can we hire? <laughs> or another request came this way. We see this beautiful swimming pool. We'd like to build a plexiglass stage in the middle of it and then place a grand piano in the center. And we'd like to make it look as though someone is walking across the water before they sit down and play. And we'd like that in two days. <laughs> it was there in two days. <sighs> During this physical production period, tempers run short, exhaustion is inevitable, and being our best self is always put to the test. Creative problem solving is vital to survive it. There's an often repeated joke as problems arise during the production process that we'll just fix it in post. 
While the editing process does give us amazing opportunities to shape and refine our creations, it is rarely a good idea to delay a fix that should have been taken care of during production. Fixing it in post will almost always be more painful and costly and will often lead to a substandard solution to what we could have done during field production. Our choices become much more limited when we reach this point. Similarly, in our own lives, while the Savior's atonement provides endless opportunities to fix it in post, delaying the changes that we need to make in our lives today robs us of that, those peace and blessings that the Lord wants to provide to us right now. As we move a project through development and production and move into the editing and post-production phase, I have to admit that this is one of the more nerve-wracking experiences, which is viewing the first rough cut of any new program. A rough cut is the first attempt to structure what was captured during production. It will often have sections missing, unfinished elements, and temporary graphics and music. A tremendous amount of imagination is required to see the full picture at times. Those moments during the development process that were painstakingly crafted, during de that they just don't work. The interview we were so excited about when we filmed it lacks the magic of the moment or the story and pacing feel flat, resulting in pages of notes. It can be discouraging after so much work has gone into getting to this stage. But as we wade through the creative process of refinement, awkward cuts are smoothed out, the nuances of scenes emerge, and the story arcs become clear. The performances are trimmed and tucked, sometimes significantly, while there will always be things we wish we'd done differently, one of the beautiful outcomes of this intense refinement is that new discoveries and opportunities arise, shaping our program in surprising new ways. As the rough cut edit progresses to a fine cut and then on to a locked cut version, it is now ready for color correction, sound design, and the final graphic elements. Our creation, that started as a spark of an idea, is now complete. While I still have those initial pains, I've learned over the years to trust and have faith in the process of refinement. In our own lives, when we care for each moment, making small or sometimes large corrections, our story begins to take shape. We will undoubtedly have times where it's hard to see how our rough cut, the life that we're creating, can ever become something beautiful. We all have scenes and moments from our stories and the choices that we've made that we're not proud of. Only through the power of his atonement can we refine and smooth those awkward, badly performed moments in our lives. Only when we allow the master editor our Savior Jesus Christ, to shape and co-create with us, can our individual story's true potential emerge. While each creative process is unique, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that in every story there will be antagonists, forces working to thwart our story's progression. These antagonists may take the form of people, ideas, choices, or circumstances in our lives. They may be openly hostile or use subtle enticements that are counterfeits of truth. Opposition in all things is a central theme in our Father's primary story. His eternal plan requires that we learn, strive, overcome, and ultimately choose to turn to Him. We might experience something akin to writer's block where feelings of fear, perfectionism, external pressures, self-criticism, and shame can prevent us from shaping the story that we intend. In a 2008 talk, You Know Enough, 
Elder Neil L. Anderson states, challenges, difficulties, questions, doubts, these are part of our mortality, but we are not alone. As disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have enormous spiritual reservoirs of light and truth available to us. Fear and faith cannot coexist in our hearts at the same time. In our days of difficulty, we choose the road of faith. When we draw on these spiritual reservoirs and exercise faith, we come to see these antagonists for what they are. Perfectionism is an illusion that paralyzes progress. Our loving Heavenly Father gives us chance after chance to iterate, to refine, to become better. Progress is enough when it is aligned with our desire to become more like our Savior. Excessive self-criticism can be crippling, but only when we forget where and who we come from. When we cease to recognize our eternal nature, our divine inheritance. External pressures can pull us away from our core. Only by choosing intentional spiritual creation can we create and align our primary story with God's plan for us. Focusing on subplots will never bring us a fullness of joy. And finally, regarding shame. Shame is a powerful lie. It parades as repentance, but it is not. Shame urges us to hide, to stop, to turn away, and to believe we aren't worthy of our Savior's love and His atonement. These antagonists and more can easily derail us if we allow it. Instead, as we walk through the spiritual, intentional refinements that the Savior offers us, our story can become more beautiful than we could have imagined. Your time here at BYU is an important scene in your life story. As the recently released brand message for BYU states, we believe a world yearning for hope and joy needs the graduates of Brigham Young University. As disciples of Jesus Christ, BYU graduates are motivated by love for God and His children. BYU graduates are directed by living prophets and prepared to serve, lift, and lead. This preparation demands a unique university model. At BYU, belief enhances inquiry, study amplifies faith, and revelation leads to a deeper understanding. As you intentionally blend your secular and spiritual learnings, I know that with faith and focus, blessings and magnificent creations will manifest themselves in your lives. As you choose to serve, lift, and lead, following in the footsteps of our Savior Jesus Christ, you will find the path that leads to your divine inheritance, your path back to Him. I love the vision and aspirations of BYU. I love the students here and the faith you all demonstrate as you lead out in this complicated world. It is my prayer that each of your journeys, your creations will be filled with intention, faith, love, and service to one another. I hope that each of you will draw on your divinely endowed creativity to fulfill the measure of your creation. I leave this with you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so very grateful for BYU and for the devotion and all those who helped make this happen. We're grateful for Sister Duke and her time and efforts to <clears throat> help us learn through our life stories that we may align it with Thee and come closer to Thee. We are grateful for 
the atonement of Jesus Christ and for all that it does for us to make those changes on our course of life. Please bless that those who have attended will be able to take this message and follow the Spirit for where it will take them. Please bless our families and friends who are not with us at this time, that they are safe. And we love thee and thank thee and say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This has been a live broadcast of a BYU campus devotional. The address today was given by Andra Duke. Find links to the full text, audio, and video of this address within the week at speeches.byu.edu. And download the free BYU radio app for episodes of the Finding Center podcast, a daily half hour of inspiration and spiritual focus. BYU Devotionals are a production of BYU Broadcasting.